This is me dying three years ago on my first PvP locked hardcore Iron Man. This is me dying six months ago on my second PvP locked hardcore Iron Man. For the majority of my time playing RuneScape, I have been restricting my gameplay to PvP worlds, and I'm ready to restrict myself again. But in a different way. So let me introduce Regioneers, my brand new hardcore Iron Man that unlocks the world of RuneScape one region at a time. However, once I leave a region, I can never go back. By using the Runelite plugin Region Locker, you can see the area that I'm currently locked to. We got the area of Misselin, that includes Lumbridge, Drainer Village, Varrock, Barbarian Village, Edgeville, the dig site and all the way up to Mauritania. I'm just gonna take a walk around the entire border. Look at that. The black shadowed areas is areas I cannot walk through. Look, this goblin I cannot kill because he is in the safe zone. I can't enter that place. Wait, what actually happens if I walk in? Oh no. Okay, gotta reset the series. I haven't planned too much out, but I know that I need to complete all quests possible in this region. Because that's most likely gonna unlock more content whenever I decide to move on to the next area. We're gonna start off here with Father Eric. The Restless Ghost is the first quest we're gonna start. This quest is necessary to unlock Mauritania in the future. Oh shit, this rat can kill me. Run, this rat can kill me. I, I need to remember I'm a hardcore Iron Man. I can't die. The beginning of what could be a very long journey, Restless Ghost completed, the first quest completed on this account. We get 9 prayer as well, and the fun has just begun. There's something special about playing a Snowflake Iron Man, everything is just so much more exciting. We're gonna bank everything we are not using for a while. We're gonna buy an inventor of wine so we can safely get the 10k from Stronghold Security. Oh my god, the screen turned black as I'm hopping. I can shop this oak tree from this side. But not from this side. Dopamine hits as we get 10k GP. <gasps> Max. That was close. Could have ended badly. I'm sorry, if you don't pick colorful boots, you are in the wrong here. Oh, we got 10k to work with. The first very important purchase is right here. Our teleporting method, chronicle, and some pages. Maybe we'll rock the cabbage cape as well. The pinnacle of RuneScape has and will always be the fashionscape. The second purchase we're gonna make is an air staff and a fire staff. When I swap regions, I might not be able to get the other staff, so I might as well have them both ready to use. And then we're going to the rain shop as well, because we need to have every single bow upgrade possible. I'm gonna pick up this knife and start fletching and woodcutting for a bit. Very important that I get some axe upgrade before I leave this area. And then of course I'm gonna need Manscaped's new beard trimmer and thankfully this video is sponsored by Manscaped. Do you have a beard that needs trimming? Then the Beard Hedger Pro Kit by Manscaped is perfect for you. The star of the game is the Beard Hedger trimmer, the powerful 7200 RPM motor and titanium coated T-blade can cut through the thickest of hair in a single stroke. And it's waterproof so you can do it in the shower. Did you know that you can customize your beard length and shape as well? You can choose from 20 different hair cutting lengths with a zoom wheel that uses only one guard. One guard that gets you 20 different lengths. If you decide to get the entire Beard Hedger Pro Kit, you will also get a beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, travel bag, and free gift of beard accessories including beard brush, beard cum, and beard scissors. And as always, use code CENGINEER at manscaped.com for 20% off plus free international shipping. Link in the description down below. Alright, we need to start the quest Rune Mysteries. This quest is very important for unlocking Mauritania. I think I need to keep collecting the runes for free here. Every every 15 minutes. I got 20 minutes until I can home teleport to Lambridge and finish this quest. So, we're just gonna pickpocket this man. Get some thieving up while waiting. Level 2 thieving. Level 3 thieving. 4 thieving. 5 thieving. Now we get double the XP every pickpocket. It's 100% success rate. You can't fail and you won't need any food. And and we get some food for uh, for the future. It's a win 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 situation. Level 10 TV. Collecting some more runes. That is the rune mysteries completed. I just started the quest Priest in Peril. We need to kill a dog so I got 5 range to upgrade to an oak shortbow. 
I am so lucky that this dungeon is in the Mistelin area so I can complete this quest and unlock Mauritania. I'm not even sure if 5 range is gonna be enough to kill this dog, I really hope it is. It seems like I will successfully kill the Temple Guardian. Surprisingly, this NPC was even harder because it regens health all the time very quickly. I've gotten 3 magic levels so far and it's still full HP. This was a bad idea. I'm gonna get a tiny little upgrade for the rematch, a blue wizard hat for some accuracy. Another upgrade for the rematch, 13 magic. We can now upgrade to fire strike. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The last pure essence to drizzle and we shall complete priest in peril. Now as you can see we have access to Mauritania whenever we feel ready to enter that region. But it's not right now. We have a lot more to do. I've decided to complete all the easy quests. This is Sheep Shearer completed. Cook's assistant completed. Romeo and Juliet completed. So this quest right here is probably the biggest impact quest so far. Vampire Slayer completed for 4800 attack experience. Putting us at 20 attack. We can now just jump straight to Mithril. There is one thing I need to figure out. And that is the anti-fire shield I will most likely need sometime, somewhere, for some reason. Dragon Slayer 2 is a quest that that's locked behind 32 quest points. I'm not sure if I can get 32 quest points in this area. And that should be Ernest the Chicken, completed. Mistelin Murder, completed. For the quest Gertrude's Cat, we're gonna need 5 fishing to catch sardines. However, we have stumbled upon a problem. I can't find a way to get either a rod or a raw sardine. Hopefully I can think of something, but as of right now, I have no idea how to get a raw sardine. I need to do some editing in the background, so while I do that, I will start woodcutting and fletching, just for some passive experience and as a moneymaker. And we are now 20 woodcutting. Ooh, a lamp. What can we use this on? Uh, I'll just send it on HP, honestly, I just don't want to die. We got a beginner's clues scroll, however, we couldn't complete it. But I feel like we should be able to complete at least one beginner's clue scroll before we leave this area. Oh my god. We got our yellow bead from an impling. This is actually the last bead we needed to complete the imp catcher. And that's imp catcher completed. I didn't think of this, but this is an upgrade. An amulet of accuracy plus four magic bonus and plus a bunch of other things as well. A budget power amulet. Very nice. Okay, we got another beginner clue scroll. Is this gonna be doable? Okay, here we go. Step one completed. Okay, step two. West Falador. No, we'll have to drop this one. Okay, we got a new attempt on a beginner's clue scroll. Completed. Completed. We might get a casket today. We might actually get a casket. A beginner's casket. I'm so excited. Let's run. I'm so excited for this. Ah, oh, we got a casket. Okay, good luck. We get absolutely nothing. Casket number two. What? We got another casket and we get... <gasps> Upgrade! We got more magic bonus! Nice! Woodcutting is so underrated. I've just been pressing this willow tree every now and then. Then I've been fletching willow longbows, taking them to the general store and selling them. I've made 18k cash, 50 woodcutting, 43 fletching, while just editing, doing errands on the computer. Okay, that's enough woodcutting. We're gonna train some combat right now. We're gonna buy a mithril sword an Addy sword and uh, we're gonna kill chickens. We can't buy feathers anywhere right now, but we have plenty of arrow shafts. We need to make these into arrows eventually. I do not recommend training on chickens, but we do have base 20 stats in combat, 22 prayer as well, 21 HP, and of course 4000 feathers, we can just AFK walk around like this, get some passive experience as well. Account progress slow and steady moving forward. I want to start getting into mining and smithing right now, but I only have a bronze pickaxe, and I can't get anything better in this region. Or so I thought. Pickpocketing ham members has a 1 in 50 chance of obtaining a steel pickaxe. A very basic upgrade, but you gotta think of these creative ways to get those upgrades. <gasps> we got it. We got the steel pickaxe upgrade, we can now leave this area. Uh, I also got a leather body, I don't know if I can buy it here, but that's for range training. However, we can now smith and mine very very efficiently. I think it's so nice that I can, from the Lumbridge mine, press the Lumbridge staircase to bank all the ores. 
This is gonna be my last inventor of tin ore. We got enough tin ore and copper for plenty of bronze bars. Uh, the bronze bars we're gonna use for bronze arrows for range training. Look at that, 200 of each. And we got 26 mining. I just realized that all that wood cutting training earlier today has a huge benefit. We can make stable canoes. This will transport me from Lumbridge all the way up to Edgeville. Look, we are in Edgeville. It took me all the way from Lumbridge right there, all the way up here. That's so many minutes saved just on that transportation method unlocked. This will be my home for the next few hours. Bronze mar making. Ten smithing. I'm gonna take the long walk around to Verok because I wanna look at this scenery. We got 4,400 headless arrows that we need to turn into bronze arrows. I could just buy all the arrows from the range store in Varok Center, but I'd rather save my GP. And I get some fletching and smithing experience on the way. And that's the last inventor of bronze bars. We are now 18 smithing. And that is 3000 bronze arrows later. We got 45 fletching now. We're gonna start range training. And we're gonna buy some range upgrades from Horvik in Varok. A studded body and a studded chaps for whenever we reach 20 range. This will be my training location for range. These minotaurs in the stronghold security drop iron arrows so I can collect those while wasting all these bronze. Upgrade time! 20 range. We can now upgrade to studded buddy, studded shafts and the willow shortbow. 30 range upgrade time we can now use maple shortbow. Okay we got another beginner's casket. Bruh. Bruh. Who is this guy? I found my first interaction. My first interaction in game with a random hardcore iron called Dick. Dicky, he called me a real champ. <laughs> no way, he added me. I'm gonna add him back. This is perfect timing, 40 range and we are basically out of bronze arrows right now. This range level incentivizes me to actually get 32 quest points and do dragon slayer so I can buy green dragon hide armor. Let me in. It is time to start questing again. Demon Slayer, here we go. Demon Slayer, completed. Shield of Arab, completed. I decided to make a list of all quests you can start in my region. The green mark quest is quest I can complete. The yellow mark quests are quests I can maybe complete. So in theory, if I complete these four quests, I will get 27 quest points in total, which is still not enough for Dragon Slayer. So the anti-fire shield is a dream long gone. I ended up doing the mini quest Daddy's Home. We got eight constructions. Construction. And we got a box of goodies. We got a very interesting quest in this region. X marks the spot. 99% of this quest is in the Missalin region, so I can complete that part. However, to finally complete the quest, you need to talk to an NPC in Port Sarim, an area outside of my region. So I can't complete it now, but I can complete it once I enter the Port Sarim region. For the next couple of hours, we will be living here in the house filled with men. And in the next episode, we will unlock a brand new region. Could it be the wilderness? Could it be Kandarin? Fremenic area? Who knows? Subscribe to find out next week. A day in the life of Sirenir. Today, you're gonna see exactly what I normally do. Every morning, we start off with a shake. This shake includes protein powder, oats, frozen berries, peanut butter, and milk. This recipe is so delicious. I've been trying to experiment with other ingredients to find something just as delicious, but I just can't find anything as good. After that, I take out my bike for 20 minutes of cardio down to the lake. Keep in mind, I only do this during the summer. And I normally only do this once a week. Once we're at the pond, we take a very quick dip in the cold water. The day of recording, the temperature was around two degrees in the air. Taking a cold swim has a lot of positive effects on the body. The moment I get up from the water, I feel so much pain, but for the hours after that, I feel so good. Once we get home, we work for maybe one or two hours, and then we go to the gym. 100 kg bench press has always been like one of my biggest gym goals, and last week, I completed it. And after the gym I eat lunch, take a shower and then work for the rest of the day. Sometimes I go out with my friends, have a burger and some drinks. These are my three favorite burgers in Stockholm, Sweden. That's a normal day in my life, Not nothing too exciting, but I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys next week, goodbye.